The PolyNurbs tool in Inspire is what allows you to take your optimized shapes, which are currently still in a mesh form, and create geometry from them directly within Inspire. PolyNurbs can be found in the Geometry panel under PolyNurbs, and the main tool that you'll find yourself using in this case is the Wrap tool. What the Wrap tool does when I select that is it detects the cross-section of your optimized shape, and as you can see, it draws a, uh, a red kind of cross-section and then fits a rectangle around that. And what I can do is I can left-click up there and now come down here, left-click, and you see it creates this kind of tube of polynerve. Uh, Right-click to get out of that tube and begin to create them. And what we're going to ideally do here is go through and create all of these large tube structures, these large kind of uh, truss member structures here. And then ultimately, we're going to use the bridge tool to piece them together. Now, you notice in this case, I'm getting kind of some weird uh, shapes. Just uh, oftentimes, it's, it's best just to kind of rotate the part around, move where your cursor is located, and you'll see you can get the shape that you ideally want. And right click again there, and I'm going to go through and complete these here. And the, as, you, as you can see here, the idea is just to create these main tube shapes here. Now rotate here. There we go. And then once we have those in place, we can move on to the bridge. So uh, we'll start, say, here. And we right click to get out of the wrap, and I'll come to bridge. Now, what bridge is going to do is it's going to allow you to select a face and then select another face, click it again, and it will bridge between the two. And in a case uh, where I'm just bridging between two things, you can see it works like that. But when I've got a, a section where I'm, I've got bridging three things, the best way to, that I've found to handle it is to create kind of the top of the T here. And that gives you this nice face right there, which you can bridge this face here. And as you can see by going through and doing this, I'm getting the general shape of the part finalized. So I can grab this one and that one, and then just like I did before, I've got that and that, and I'm good there. Now this one's a little bit interesting one. So if I come here and I click this face and I click this face, I get that nice bridge there. But now I've got two sections that are gonna want to come in to here. A couple of different ways I could do that. I could either create, say, this bridge here and connect it to that and then bridge from this to this and that that's one way of doing it uh, another option that i'd have so let me undo some of this is i can come to the split here so if i come to the split faces and i'll pick that face right in the middle and we'll grab the middle of that face right there what it ends up doing is it splits that face into two pieces and now I can bridge between this half with this piece here and this half with this piece here and that's another uh, another way of doing it it gives us more of a, a sharp uh, a sharp corner up in there um, so whichever way you want to go with that I'd probably go with the other one uh, I think it just ended up nicer going with that so let me undo that split there and uh, bridge between this and that, and then between this face and that face. So I think that looks a little bit better there. Now, when you're not in any tool, if I select a, uh, a face, I can take and I can move that a little bit, uh, or I can even grab the, the little points here and I can move those as well. Um, also, uh, when I come to sharpen here, Sharpening uh, determines how closely the NURB feature, uh, the geometry, adheres to the cage that we've got. So uh, let me just do a window select and grab them all. Uh, right now I've got, I can go to no, I can go to low, which is kind of where I was at to begin with. I can go to medium, which is almost exactly matching up, but still with round edges, or high, which is basically taking that cage that I created and completely filling it uh, with uh, sharp edges and all. 
usually we're going to go somewhere between uh, low and medium. I think with this part, medium is probably the the, the best bet. Uh, or low. It, either way, you can go. You can go with that. Um, another thing that I want to do, and we'll show you here, is how we're going to end up connecting this to the design space that we have already. And the easiest way to handle that is to just with nothing selected here. If I select this face, as I showed, I could I could drag it. So I'm going to drag it into that nerb there. I'm sorry, into that solid there. And then I'm going to grab this face. I'm going to drag it down just a little bit. I don't want it sticking out of the geometry at all. I want it completely contained within that geometry. Otherwise, we're going to end up with some like sliver faces there. Perfect. And now that I have that all taken care of, if I come and turn off my uh, part there, you'll see we're, we're in here. And now I can just simply come to Boolean and come to subtract. I'm going to select that as my target. This as my tool. And we obviously want to keep the tools and subtract. And now this and this are, uh, are separated. And you'll see here, if I hide this, I have that nice, perfect face right there. Another alternative that I could do uh, is instead of doing the subtract, I can go Boolean and come to combine and select this and this and combine those two. Uh, as you can see, it kind of eliminated that other one. That's uh, something that happens every once in a while. So subtracting may be the way to go with that. And then I can go through and, and fill it, fill at these edges. When I've uh, completed all of the bridging and uh, the, the wrapping, uh, I end up with, uh, with a part that looks like this and we can exit out of the poly nerves, turn off that, and you can see we have this part here. And just like I said, we can go, we can opt to go with the, uh, probably go with the medium sharpening on this. Oh, no, actually, I can't sharpen it anymore because once I do those Boolean operations, that eliminates that ability. So the Boolean operations are what you're going to want to do absolutely last. But that's, uh, that's how we can go about creating the polynerve geometry directly within Inspire. Really, the direction that you want to head to create your geometry is entirely up to you. Uh, I think I mentioned in the previous video that you could take the, the general shape that you see from the optimization and just use that as kind of a framework to, uh, to develop your geometry in your CAD system, just kind of by eyeball and taking measurements with Inspire. You saw the auto polynerbs, which is uh, just a single button click and we get to polynerbs, uh, but it's not a nice, clean, smooth, uh, bridged polynerb like this, or you can opt to do the, the polynerbs directly within Inspire here. Uh, either way you decide to do it, this is now geometry that can be exported out or saved out. I'm just going to go to the, we just go to the file save and select whatever uh, form of geometry I want to save, whether it is an, I just a step or a parasolid, and I could bring this directly into my CAD package. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the, for the basic polynerves. There's some other things in here and we can, we can uh, adjust the polynerves a little closer to the, to the uh, initial mesh. Uh, you can just create polynerves directly within Inspire. The, the, the creating uh, is, will not be based on any optimized shape. You just create the polynerves. Um, and uh, yeah, so that will allow you to, to work with geometry directly within Inspire. So I hope this helps and uh, we'll look for you in future videos.